Sometimes the American dream really does look exactly like you'd expect it to. Shop beside the house, gravel driveway, countryside stretching as far as you can see. But step inside and you'll find something remarkable. A father who taught himself CNC machining from scratch, building a business that can fabricate and machine just about anything you can imagine. Now, he's passing that knowledge to the next generation, teaching his son not just how to run machines, but how to build something that lasts. Welcome to Britsman Enterprises, where they'll tackle everything from precision manufacturing to custom fabrication, proving that world-class manufacturing can happen anywhere dedication meets determination. We started in the attached garage up there. Fabricating and welding was my core. That's what I went to school for. And machining is, is such a compliment to having that. And with the fabricating side, I was making a product at the time that I was selling on the internet. And that's why I bought that mill in the corner, that Tormach, to replace three manual mills that he was cranking handles on. Oh, really? So yeah. you guys were doing actual production on that? Yeah. What kind yeah. of product was it? You don't have to get specific, um, but. Uh, replacement parts for corn stoves. Okay. Sold my first business or sold my half in the first business and I took some time off and very left-handedly got started in this. I didn't have any intention of starting another business. And then you kind of fell into it. <laughs> it just kind of happened organically. Um, once my customer base found out, oh, I have a CNC, well, can you do this? Can you do that? So then I bought another 1100M and great machines, I haven't had a problem with them. I mean, normal maintenance stuff, you know, uh, support's always been good. And um, then from there, what did we do? I think I got to Adel. We had some little parts we were R&D in. That's the turning center right here, right? Yeah, that's this little one. Okay, well now I got bigger parts and then we got the 15L. Um, and then, uh, oh, now and then we do a lot of uh, kitting in Pelican boxes with foam. And so the Tarmac router. That, oh, I didn't even realize that was that that glue, yeah. We stock all different kinds of uh, foam and then we machine the foam to put into these boxes. What it's, kind of industries are you guys, you know, predominantly it's working mostly in these Mostly uh, commercial and industrial. Um, I have um, a customer in the next town over that, that makes uh, animal feed and we do a lot of repair components. We help them design maybe a new uh, drive system for one of their dryers, you know, things like that. Now, That's, you wouldn't even know it from the road, but you guys have one, two, three, four, technically five CNC machines in yes. here. You also have a full rack of 3D printing and additive machining yeah, going on over there. three, four, five, six. Now, what's really interesting here is I go to a lot of places, you know, we have a, a small um, 3D printer in my place, but 90% of what I see people doing with 3D printing is I want to make some bins for my shop or I want to make some soft jaws. With the amount you have going there, I'm guessing that this is actually this consumer is production. parts or... It's production for one of our customers. Production? Yeah. I don't it's see anybody doing that right now. Our, this is just a small order here, but those are printing on a 10,000 part order. 10,000 parts. Now, mm -hmm. you know, when you guys do onesie twosie stuff compared to doing <laughs> 10,000 part orders, what kind of mix would that be? I mean, obviously this is additive compared mm -hmm. to CNC machining, but like, what does a typical order look like? Can be anything. It's eh? anything. <laughs> a typical order is anything. These are the, the high volume orders are maybe one or two of those a year. It's crazy that, that you guys with. have that much business that you'll, you know, if you have the need for it, you'll buy multiple new printers, you'll right. buy a new machine. You guys are, this isn't a small shop. This is pretty much an enterprise running yeah. from a home yeah. business. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's crazy. I mean, we have, uh, let's see, Parter coat shop that we work with, we always, I mean, there's not a week goes by that we do not have something at the powder coater. The, the project I'm working on right now at the animal food place, I will drop the parts. We're gonna, they'll make the kit of parts for us 
So when I get the kit of parts, I can go down and we can install it in place. While it, this particular project, it has to get welded in place in the facility. And you'll do that as well? Yeah. yeah. It's great. I'm, just a, end to end. I'm a certified <laughs> welder. I do pipe welding for one of our local uh, fuel fuel uh, piping contractors. <laughs> you guys can literally handle and anything. I, it's pretty much a tri-state area. I do really? one or two of those every year too. Sometimes three or four. Now but I understand yeah. why you have such nice machinery in here. <laughs> yeah. Um, and well, yeah, I mean, and we've done a lot of bootstrapping. Other thing is I hate borrowing money. So when we can buy it or at least borrow half, then, you know, do Cash that business, way. that's the way I work too. I don't like paying the bank. <sighs> yeah, the interest is nuts. It's, it's insane. Yeah. It's insane. It's automatic bandsaw? This one is not. This is a, a, a semi-automatic. It shuts off uh, when it gets through with one with the cut. It's mitering head. Um, okay. This is kind of, this one gets used just about every day. You know, onesie twosies, finishing up a drop piece of material. We have the little Tormach um, auto feed. Oh, right I didn't there. know they made one of those. And we love it. It has been flawless, honestly. Um, and you can tell by it, it needs to be cleaned out again. That was last week to run. That's um, after one week. That's pretty good. Well, we've got one project right now that how many pieces? There's probably 500 or more pieces of laser cut aluminum that they cut out for us, then it goes to the powder coater, then we have another uh, vendor that does the laser etching, because after the powder coated, the, laser, yep. the part numbers and whatnot gets laser etched into it, then we finally get it back to do the final installations or final assembly. So you guys really do quarterback, someone will come to you, 75% of it's gonna be outside, I, I do this too, yeah. but you need to know the vendor on the outside, it's your relationship with them, yep. you guys are the quality control, and then you also are assembling. Yes. A lot of great yeah. businesses do that, mm -hmm. and it's a lot of brain power, but once you get that going, it, it works really well. Yes, and, and we also hired uh, one, of, one of our vendors, also my age, getting closer to retirement. Uh, he's also uh, one of Dylan's college teachers, uh, instructors at Madison College. Uh, he's he's uh, on kind of on an as-needed basis. We are able to hire him contractually. And awesome. He helps me with quoting and some of the subcontractor management as well. I mean, it, it's just amazing, you know, basically we've got uh, Mark, our gentleman in Reedsburg, and myself, and he's doing the production. <laughs> you know, it's really kind of off balance that way, but there's so many subcontractors to, yeah. to manage and keep everybody on the same, on the correct page. about this machine here. This is a 1500MX. That's yes, a it. straight three axis mill. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, you got some Saunders Machine Works. Mm -hmm. We're on Just there. put that on. Did you? Just put that on because of this part. I can't tell you what this part is, but as of right now, it's just a block of round aluminum. Well, square turned into round. That you can show because uh, of course, but I'm not. I can't tell you what it's for. Of course, um, I can't show you what it's going to look like. Oh yeah, you guys are running some big tooling in there. High feed mill. Well, the high feed mill. Uh, with an inch and a quarter shank that we uh, chucked in the 15L and turned Turn down, it back. turned it down to get into uh, ER40 BT30 now, to get it to work. I've never <laughs> seen someone run full size tooling like that in a BT30. I'm taking it based on the fact that you have a finished part there. It ran fine. Yeah. High RPM. High, high RPMs. Feed. High feed. Yeah. So yeah, it ran while I was at my customers yesterday. It ran. No, I didn't care how long it took because I wasn't here. And he was here just you working were, on everything he else. Was, parts, he huh? was deburring parts and inspecting plastic parts and he was just keeping an ear open for this. Make sure if, the insert doesn't go. Exactly. If he heard something not right, if it started talking to him. And as a guy who, do you have any background <laughs> in CNC machining in terms of programming before you started bringing these in? Be, yeah, so my previous business. Oh, but so you it was, did work. It was it. mostly all conversational or editing G code. Right. Nothing in CAM. 
Right. So that was a huge hurdle for me when I got the 1100M and I got rid of all my manual machines. And that one is conversational as well too, or is that? That's, that's Tormach, yeah, that's, that's the same path. Well, essentially the same controller. Okay. But when I got that, I had to learn cam because right. I had to do stuff that I couldn't do with conversational. And so it was like a lot of nights down here at midnight learning the cam program. fourth axis for this and we have one actually on that machine right now so for these two you don't if i remember correctly it's not like for some of my machines if you don't buy it with fourth axis enabled you have to pay a lot of money to get it turned on no these ones it's just a button or something is it not you well for you this, this, this one yeah. this one is pre-wired for it we just have to put the drive in the back right so the fourth axis kit comes with the, the extra drive and then the wiring's all there. You just have to connect it to the so drive. So you can do it yourself. Yeah, we can do it ourselves, and then it just plugs in. What's the main difference between the speed? Speed. Speed. That's R8 spindle. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, it's BT30. That has the TTS Tormox tooling system. Mm -hmm. um, no tool changer. Uh, stepper motor drives. Right. This is all servo. So, you know, so it's completely. It's night and day. It's speed. Um, more accuracy over here. But that thing, that'll, you can run within a thou all day long. How many years were you in the industry before you bought these CNC machines? Gosh, I started, I went to uh, welding and fabricating tech school and so I'm dating myself. So there. you've been in here a long time and then you said, you know what, I'm gonna teach myself I, this, I'm gonna learn it, yes. invest in it. Yeah. It's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. It's more people, people mm -hmm. seem to think that if you don't get into it early that you're screwed. That's no, not the case. I, and I started with manual machines too. So right. you learn a lot from the feel. When you go from this to that then and, and you're used to cranking handles, it's hard because you don't have that, you lose that the tactile. sense. Yeah. But you but still know. You pick it up by, I always lay a hand on the machine and I'm listening, you know. Exactly. So, you you mind know. if we take a quick peek of this, peek of this rotor? I have not seen one of these before with a tool changer on it. <laughs> oh, that, we just put that on about a year ago. And that's, that, that was. That 30 That's even smaller. That's, that's a ISO 20 or something. ISO 20, yeah, those are teeny. They're it's cool. a minimum RPM of 10,000. I think it goes up to 28,000. Minimum of 10,000. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Super, super cool. Now, this has been handy. It, we had a job come in. It was a, a larger, making some larger machine plastic. And looked at it. I'm like, well, it's going to fit on here. And we made some dedicated, these boards are cheap at Menards. So we got the program in there put the bolt pattern in, bolt it down. This has Way a vacuum great. table too, which works oh, through it? this cart, through this plywood, it'll work. Do you guys program with cam or is cam. This, this would be same, cam as well? Same cam, same. same everything. We don't have to change any of the settings in cam to program this. Fair enough. It's the same, you know, because that one's servo and these are steppers, it doesn't matter. There you go. There is yeah. a really good community I've heard with the uh, Tormach users that do help each other out and, yep. you know, kind of, yeah. trade information mm -hmm. back and forth on how to upgrade, what mm -hmm. you should be using. It's very community yeah, driven. It, you know, this is very aspirational for a lot of people. They see mm -hmm. what you guys are doing here and they're like, I want to do that. You guys have more work than you know what to do with. Mm -hmm. You have multiple CNC machines right, you know, what, 30 feet from your front door. Yep. Um, what would you say to them if they were trying to get into that but really didn't know how to start? It's hmm. a good question. Make sure your wife has a really good job Yeah. <laughs> to start with. Um, with benefits, that's really what's allowed me to do, to do it in the beginning right. was we budgeted our household off of what she made, not what I made right. in the beginning. Now it's the other way around, but, um, that's a big thing. Don't overextend yourself. You know, if all you can afford is a bench mill, then that's what you start with. And, you know, kind of like, what is it? I build it and they will come. Yeah. And that's that's basically, you know, 
what we've done, we've been blessed with just tapping to find the right customers, mm -hmm. you know, but that just takes networking and years. It's, it's been a whole lifetime for me. Right. It's my lifetime. I'm still doing some work for my first company I worked for. Oh, really? Not much here and there, some repair stuff, but, but yeah, I mean, some of the guys I worked with there are still there 40 years ago. So just amazing. It, never burn a bridge. Exactly. You can still leverage, even if you haven't started your shop, you can leverage your existing network from when you were working for someone yeah. else into helping you get your business yeah. started. And that, and that's exactly how I started the first business. I went back to the company uh, that I worked for in Minnesota and got work from them. Fair enough. And I mean, didn't burn a bridge, left on great terms. And yeah, I mean, that worked out. gave us some production stuff to start working to build your name locally. So what was the kind of path that you took in here? Because obviously your father's been in the trade for a long time, but I have a feeling you were like me and said, I want to do something else first. I, I did, yeah, no, um, I still have a passion for cooking and I, I love that I wanted to do something with that after I found out college wasn't gonna work for me. But as college wasn't gonna work for me, my dad offered me this wonderful job. I didn't really have anywhere else to go. I didn't have an idea for what I wanted for the future, so I just thought I'd give it a try. I, nothing hurts for a try, right? right. Um, and uh, from there, it's just been gradual learning every single day, it's like school. I've seen my progress grown. Um, I, I was watching my dad run the machines and then it was, oh, set up the tools, put the tools in. Oh, you can put the material in, set up the stops, and build and build and build until you finally have that uh, foundation to do things on your own. And one day it clicks and you go, I just set up and ran that entire job exactly. by myself. Exactly, yeah, <laughs> After no. I learned all the bits, right? Mm -hmm. Is this something you want to do for a long time, maybe take over? Hopefully, yeah. I mean, um, it's good clientele, good customer base, good money, um, and, I'm, and I'm learning. I'm able to do it partially. Uh, there's no stopping me if I learn it all the way. 100%. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.